尊敬的穆拉图·特肖恩阁下，呃，感谢您接受人民网的专访啊。我们知道，埃塞俄比亚是在非洲非常有影响力的国家，两国建交也五十多年了，两国的关系发展的态势也非常好，也是互为全面战略合作伙伴啊，堪称中非交往的一个典范。我们想知道，在您的职业生涯中，呃，有哪些关于中哎交往两国交往的给你印象深刻的故事啊？您怎么评价两国的关系？对未来两国关系的发展，您有哪些看法和预测啊 ？Thank you very much for、uh, giving me the opportunity to share with you my thoughts regarding Ethiopia-China relations. Uh, from uh, the question, I, I, I think it would be much better if I start by noting the impressions, and especially deep impressions, during my career as a diplomat and also as a, as a government official, as Minister of Ethiopia, regarding China-Ethiopia relations. You know, it was、um, when I was ambassador of Ethiopia to China, when、uh, the former、um, Prime Minister Malazina first made a, the first visit to China, and、uh, I could say that、uh, it really was、uh, the beginning of the warming up of relations between Ethiopia and China.、Uh, Common interest, mutual benefit, focusing on、uh, areas where Ethiopia can benefit from、uh, the cooperation, which we were supposed to make with、uh, the People's Republic of China. And、uh, since I was、uh, the ambassador, I hosted it in a very well manner, and actually the discussions. Of、uh, the prime minister and、uh, all his, all his、uh, counterparts, we're focused on how best we, we can bring Ethiopia-China relations to the benefit of our two countries. That is、uh, the first impression which I can never forget. So it was、uh, the reinforcement and、uh, really declaration of、uh, true friendship. Between Ethiopia and China, actually, it was underlined that the cooperation between Ethiopia and China can be best、uh, beneficial to both countries if we focus on trade, investment, and especially encouragement of Chinese、uh, companies to come and.、Uh, Invest in Ethiopia or participate in infrastructure development, which the Ethiopian government was undertaking extensively. So the, these these are areas where、uh, I really、uh, always look at the very basis of、uh, the cooperation、uh, which we are in today when it comes to. The development of trade, investment, and、uh, also Chinese companies' participation in Ethiopia's、uh, infrastructure and program developments. If you ask me what would be the future of、uh, the cooperation between Ethiopia and China looks like, I think it's going to develop. It is going to be focused basically on.、Uh, The investment from China to to Ethiopia,、uh, especially in the manufacturing sector, Chinese companies can benefit, and Ethiopia also can benefit from the investments which are going to be made by the Chinese companies. So it is not、um, something which starts this year and ends next year. It is going to be long, long term. Cooperation. From this long-term cooperation, both Ethiopia and China can benefit. And if we have this strong cooperation, 
strong uh, economic interaction, then it will be the foundation for political, diplomatic, cultural, and other aspects of the relationship between our two countries. So Ethiopia is encouraging more um, Chinese investment. Uh, Ethiopia is also seeking to have more trade with China. Uh, basically, the trade balance is in favor of China, but Ethiopia also is uh, seeking to have more market share in the uh, Chinese market. 德夏，今年是中国改革开放四十五周年，您一直是中国改革开放的关注者和见证者。呃，您怎么评价中国改革开放以来取得的成绩？您关注哪些领域的发展 ？Yeah, China's、uh, rapid economic development is、uh, basically based on the good policies. Of、uh, the Chinese government to develop its economy, but、uh, most of all, I think、uh, focusing not only on development, on economic uh, uh, development, but it was more of people-centered, focused on raising the living standard of the Chinese people. That I think is the most. Success part of Chinese reform and、uh, opening up. We see many countries in this world where、uh, economy is growing, or、uh, when you can say there is development in industry in、uh, all aspects of economy. But、um, it is sometimes very difficult what people benefited out of that development. But in China. What benefit reform brought is you can see it from the changes it brought to the living standard of the Chinese people. I know where what、uh, the Chinese people's living standard was in the late 1970s because I made my、uh, first trip. To study in China in 1976, and、uh, the people of China, because of their hard work, because of the policies which were、uh, drawn、um, and formulated to make、uh, the benefit to its people.、Uh, I witnessed all the developments, from especially from the opening up up to my、uh, time as a student, and also、uh, when I went back as、uh, ambassador. It was a different Beijing, and it was a different China. Ge Xia has been in Beijing University and Beijing University for many years. 您现在是不是还记得留学期间的印象深刻的事情？您对现在两国间文化交流、教育交流，特别是青年交流，有哪些期待和建议 ？The time already has uh, uh, been very long, so some of the things、uh, may be a little bit difficult to really remember.、Uh, but I had very lively. And very happy study time in Peking University. Actually, before Peking University, I was at the Peking Lang- Language Institute. I love、uh, both these、uh, learning institutions because it was、uh, the Peking Language Institute which、uh, gave me the opportunity to open、uh, the door for、uh, my Chinese. Language and entrance to、uh, Chinese universities, especially Peking University.、Um, Peking University also is、uh, a university which、uh, shaped me, I could say, which、uh, changed uh, my uh, world outlook and、uh, which、uh, brought me to the level where I am and where I was. So I I, I love.、Uh, My stays in China as a student. 
Uh, to your uh, surprise, uh, it was only five students uh, from Ethiopia uh, when we went to China for our scholarship. Out of uh, the five, three of us graduated and um, the others uh, actually couldn't make their graduation but uh, the thing is during that time five was too many okay uh, but now uh, if you are going to give the opportunity of uh, uh, going and studying abroad starting from the bachelor's uh, degree for uh, Ethiopian students, it should be in hundreds, okay? Uh, so maybe for uh, postgraduate students, I still highly encourage this uh, cultural exchange, educational exchange, so that uh, Ethiopians can benefit from the uh, Chinese learning institutions. Gesia今年是中国提出一带一路倡议的十周年。二零一八年安塞俄比亚就和中国签署了一带一路共建的谅解备忘录。您如何评价一带一路倡议给安塞俄比亚、给非洲带来了哪些变化？ Yeah, the Belt and Road Initiative from this very name is about having the infrastructure in place to connect uh, countries, connect China to the outside world, connect China to Africa, to Ethiopia. And in that, uh, it gives very important emphasis in the development of infrastructure, that's roads and uh, uh, ports, uh, railways, which Ethiopia is a beneficiary. Uh, for example, the Djibouti Addis Ababa railway is a very good example to, to tell. But it is not enough. We have to continue to have uh, more railways more uh, highways, more ports, and so that um, after having this uh, economic infrastructure, the flow of goods and services between China and Ethiopia, between China and Africa, can be accessible. It can uh, assist in a very strong way the economic cooperation and collaboration between Ethiopia and China, between Ethiopia, uh, Africa, and uh, uh, even for uh, African countries, uh, it is very important. Uh, it's not limited to Ethiopia and China, or Ethi China and Africa. Even uh, when we look into the countries it touches, Africa can benefit a lot uh, from the road uh, and belt initiative. So for the whole Asia, Europe, Middle East, Eurasia, this can be accessible, some by railways, some by roads, some by sea. Uh, so it is uh, a very uh, important uh, and useful initiative. And Ethiopia is uh, dedicated to make the road and uh, built initiative a success story. Now,在当今世界面临的是百年未有之大变局,您认为在当前的这种形势下,多边的合作有没有有何特殊的重要性?如何加强发展中国家团结合作,共同面对世界受到的这种风险和挑战? Yes, um, very important to underline that uh, multilateralism has to be encouraged uh, because the challenges which uh, 
is faced by the international community is um, how to address global governance, how to address peace and security issues of the world, how to address development needs, and especially the global governance, which is basically dominated by few countries, especially by Western world. The global governance rules and regulations are not written by the developing world. It is formulated, adopted by the big powers, by the Western developed countries. It has to be fair to everybody, to every country, be it small or big. And uh, the um, not only the economic share, but uh, the political attitude and uh, the way the international community has to handle its affairs has to be revisited. This needs the coming together of the developing world. Uh, we can take uh, the example of how the international community is regrouping itself, especially the developing world. Uh, the, when the BRICS, that is uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, came together, it was only five countries. But now there is um, a very big interest from other uh, parts of the world, including South America or Latin America, Africa, the Middle East, Eurasia, and Southeast Asia, who are showing interest to join the BRICS club, the BRICS group. Because in that um, reformation of uh, the global stand-up, uh, countries may seek to protect their interests, national interests. Uh, it is to get out of the challenges of uh, being dominated by some few. Uh, so, uh, be it Africa or uh, Ethiopia or other developing countries, uh, in the interest of uh, their uh, national economy, uh, their uh, regional peace and security, and also their economic interest, their share in global shares, and especially the global currency. These are areas where the uh, developing uh, countries have to come together and uh, seek a common agenda for themselves in the interest of their uh, respective national interests. We know that Isaac Arabia is the main part of the United States. The United States has also contributed to the United States and the United States. How do you see the United States and the United States? How do you see the United States? Pan-Africanism, which is the philosophical basis for African solidarity, for Africans coming together is to repeal the suppression, colonial uh, oppression on African countries. And uh, so starting with the Pan-Africanism, the organization of African unity came into place and it served to the total liberation of Africa from the yoke of colonialism, including the abolition of uh, apartheid South Africa. And uh, after the political freedom was gained, China still is with African people to support and assist Africans to develop their economies. I think that uh, is 
why the Chinese government has uh, committed itself to build the headquarters of the Africa Union in Addis Ababa. So Africa and China uh, have got a uh, very good historic uh, relationship, a uh, relationship which uh, has no negative imprints at all, except uh, solidarity and standing together at the international common agendas. Now, Ethiopia, of course, is uh, the host for uh, the headquarters of African unity, and it has uh, a very big uh, role in coordinating African uh, agendas in the interest of Africa. And that will continue. And Ethiopia is um, actually uh, trying its level best to bring all African countries for a common goal to make Africans uh, trade with each other, grow, develop together, and uh, actually in uh, identifying their common goals. Uh, Africans uh, have already established uh, regional economic uh, blocks in which the final uh, goal is uh, to, to the continental integration. In that, Africa is ex expecting to uh, continue its cooperation with the People's Republic of China.